All right, so we can cool here with gears. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, you know, I can complain. Who's gonna fucking listen? Yeah, I mean, everybody's complaining right now. <laughs> so, uh, congratulations on the new track, man. So what? It was fucking awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah, the response has been really, really good for it. You, I dug it because it's like it's, it's relevant. You know what I mean? It, it sounds like everyone's arguing about shit. You know what I mean? Families are giving dis- different opinions on different things, and everyone's fighting. You know? Yeah, I mean, the last you know, the better part of, you know, a year, two years, uh, I feel like that there's been just so much turmoil, you know, on every level and, um, definitely a lot of people not getting along (laughs) for various reasons. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, uh, interpreting the song, I think it could be very applicable to anybody, you know, I, I really think people being locked in the house as much as they have been has to do a lot of the arguing. I mean, you think anyone would give a fuck about Pepe Le Pew a year ago? I, I still, you know, I'm, I'm kind of taken back by, you know, and I'm, I always try to, I'm pretty, you know, a centrist, you know, I kind of line up in the middle where, and it took me a lot of years to kind of figure that out. You know, if it's not something that I'm particularly passionate about, you know, uh, and even if I am passionate about it, I still try to respect other people's opinions. You know what I mean? So I, I can understand if someone feels strongly about this and, uh, you know, if someone feels strongly about that. Like I get the disagreement, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't really know what to say about Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> Blows my mind. You know what I mean? People are going after cartoons and Dr. Seuss, but on the Grammy, those two chicks can rub their snatches together and they get fucking rounds of applause. You know what I mean? That's a very, very popular opinion that I that I see. Yeah, I mean, you know, dude, I mean, censorship is, I mean, as old as humanity itself. You know what I mean? Maybe, you know, there's always going to be somebody that doesn't disagree with, you know, something and, you know, they're going to want to voice their opinion about it. You know, I think, you know, everybody knows, you know, from my point of view anyway, and, and, you know, I'm not speaking for anyone else, but I mean, we've written songs about like how much we kind of despise social media. Right. You know, I just think it was something that, you know, at, at the beginning was intended and, and I think it was well executed to bring people together across a distance. And now I, I don't know that that's the main purpose for it these days. You know what I mean? It's just, it's a marketing tool and it's this and it's that. And I mean, uh, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know where to really go with it from there. I just know that, you know, when I look down my Facebook feed or, you know, Twitter feed and I see people that like, you know, I'll see two people that I absolutely love, you know, like going at it, you know, over right. something that I, I, you know, I just don't understand how, how, you know, we, we as humans just let that, you know, get in the way of, of who we are. You know, I mean, I mean, there's certain instances where I guess um, it's warranted, you know what I mean? But just, I, I don't know, in my opinion, and this is my opinion only, it's just, I feel like some of the stuff that we're fighting over is from absolute boredom and frustration. 100%, man, 100%, you know? I mean, I don't know, it's unfortunate that social media gives everybody a voice, but the majority of the people's voice out there is being used to tell someone they're a piece of shit for not believing what they believe. <laughs> I know it, man. And that's, that's the, that's facts right there. Like that's just cold, hard facts, man. And you're 100% right. But I mean, I, you know, on the other side of it is, you know, we're all, you know, people and we have our rights. And if that's what people want to use it for, I I mean, I, 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 I don't necessarily want to do that. You know, I want to see, you know, I, I want to see pictures of dogs and like, I want to see my friends like, you know, a triumphant moment on stage or something, you know, that's the kind of stuff that I, I, you know, that really kind of floats my guy. I mean, I, it is 100% guaranteed that when I see the arguing and the bickering and you're an asshole, no, you're an asshole. Like I'm scrolling right past that shit. I don't even want to know. It happened today. It happened today. I'm I'm scrolling through, you know, um, and I, I just, I caught like, you know, pretty, you know, pretty, uh, sensitive topic for some people. And I'm just like, I, you know what? I don't even want 
anything to do with that. So I don't even want to know about it, man. And and uh, you know, maybe that's not the most pro or most uh, activist approach, but I just don't want any, I don't want anything to do with it, man. I'm it, it's, it's hard enough to stay positive every day as it is. Like, I just don't want that negativity. You know, I'm not even letting that shit in the door, man. <laughs> you know, as a physician, that's the smartest stance they have, man. You know what I mean? Uh, you post the wrong thing, you're going to have half your fans down to your fucking asshole for uh, right when you believe in. Yeah. And I mean, there's so many other more creative ways to go about it. I mean, we're, you know, us as musicians, we're given the gift of, creativity through song you know and you know if you feel strongly about something i mean you can put it into a song and you don't have to come out and say exactly what it is and you can still use that creative outlet to to voice an opinion you know i mean it's you know like i always say and you know not that i'm the first person to say this but i subscribe to you know if you play the same song for 10 different people it's going to mean 10 different things you know, we'll be at the merch table, uh, you know, or doing signings or, or whatever, meet and greets at, at, on, at shows. And I mean, somebody will come up and say, hey, man, this song really, you know, helped me through this. And, you know, and I'm just like, that's awesome. You know, shake your hands. And then they walk away and trip and I look at each other's like, that's not what we wrote that song at all <laughs> about, you know, what I mean? but that's the power of music. That's that connectivity, man. And, and that's the, you know, that's the thing that I love most about you know, the actual writing and recording process. I want to you guys just recently, I, it's a double-edged sword for me. I, I loved and I hated it. And I'll tell you why is your cover of Deftones. Mm -hmm. Fucking awesome track. Love the fact that you did it. The reason I hate it is it made me feel old as shit. I was like, man, <laughs> this song is uh, too new to be covered. And then I'm like, well, this thing's going on fucking 25 years old, man. I'm old as dirt now. Dude, I, I, I mean, I, I remember exactly where I was the first time I ever heard Deftones and it was that song. Right. You know, I was like, a, uh, I was either a freshman or a sophomore in high school and I hopped in the car, you know, we all used to ride together to school. My, you know, I had a older friend that had his license and, you know, he would come by and pick us all up and we'd hop in there and I heard the song and it just like that riff that, you know, I was just like, Whoa, what is this? You know what I mean? Because it was so, I don't know, I, not to get like too nostalgic or too cheesy, but I mean, it was like, oh, you know, <laughs> and I, I, you know, of course, you know, I didn't want to be, you know, everybody in the car like is jamming to it. So I'm assuming they know who it is. So I don't want to ask. So, you know, I spent all night trying to figure that out because it wasn't just, you know, type into Google at that time. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm talking 1995 or six, you know, and it just wasn't that. And so I had to figure out who it was. And then once I did, man, I went to, you know, I think the tower records or, you know, wall to wall sound of video. I remember when record stores existed, when people actually bought those, those yeah. little things. Uh, but anyway, um, I went and I got it that day. And I don't think I stopped listening to that record for a very long time. Um, I mean that song and then engine number nine and then uh, seven words and root. And I mean, it was just, that was awesome to me, you know, and that was, I think I even found Deftones before I found Corn, you know, and to me, like the Deftones were, were really, you know, pioneers of that, like, you know, that West Coast new metal sound. And it was, it, you know, and everything they put out after that, man, I was, I was, you know, uh, I was pumped when I heard they were coming out with a new record, you know, around the fur came out then after that same thing. And then, you know, when white pony came out and, and what's so cool about Deftones is the way they have evolved, but still stayed true to like their kind of sounds, you know? Right. And like, I don't think that they're, you know, I, you'd be hard pressed to kind of find a band for, you know, my opinion that has been able to do that. You know, I can't think of a bad record from them. You know, I can't, you know, uh, I could literally go in and pick any of their CDs off the wall and put it in and listen to it front to back. You know, not, like not not even an issue, not even a, like, oh, I want to skip this song, you know. But on, in reality, man, your cover was fucking amazing. It was so Thank nice. you. Thank you. That was cool, man. I mean, we we had been playing that song live since, you know, the band first started. 
You know, um, we wanted to throw a cover into the mix because we knew because we had all been in bands that toured previously, we knew how hard it was to break through as a new band. So, you know, we're going to come and we're, you know, a lot of times we were opening for other, other bands or, or supporting other bands. And, you know, we had 30 minute set, you know, unless, you know, there's a good chance that they never heard any of these songs. So right. for one, we got to sell it with the stage show. And number two, you know, we wanted to have some familiarity somewhere in the set. So that's why, you know, we picked that song because it just slams and it was, you know, a song that I felt we could do well, um, you know, musicianship wise and, you know, Trip kills it live. And, um, you know, it was like at a show like years later, a couple of years later that somebody had, come, you know, we're outside or whatever and uh, of the venue and, and somebody said, man, you guys do a killer cover. You know, I've seen you guys a couple of times. You guys do a killer cover aboard. Have you ever thought about recording it? And it was like, why didn't we think of that? So we went in the studio and we did it. And, you know, it's, it's gotten some pretty good, pretty good response. Now, another cover that you guys did is a call to personality. And I'm telling you, man, trip vocals are so dead on on that. When you guys have Corey on the song, it almost sounds like Corey had to change his vocals a little bit. Not to, you know what I mean? To have a different sound. Yeah, I mean, I think they complement each other really well. They sounded really good. To I mean, it just being in those sessions, uh, having them both there, you know, and we had one of them in one vocal booth and another one in another vocal booth. And, you know, we did a couple takes where, you know, Tripp did it straight through, Corey did it straight through, then we, you know, switched it up. And then after we got a couple takes of that, you know, they sat in the control room and kind of split up the lyrics. And I don't think that they could have possibly done that in a better way. You know, it was really cool to have Corey be down with it from the time that I showed him the song and be like, yeah, man, this is cool. I would I would definitely consider being a part of this, you know, I, you know, of course, my mind, you know, and I mean, that's one of Tripp's biggest influences. Right. You know, he loves Living Color. You know, that was one of those bands for all of us that kind of broke down that, you know, uh, I don't want to say racial barrier, but it kind of started to. You know, it showed us some diversity in the genre. And um, I mean, they, they blew my mind the first time, you know, I saw that video and, you know, Corey's, you know, jumping around with the dreadlocks, different colors and the body glove, you know, uh, wetsuit. And, you know, you got uh, Muzz with those tight, you know, uh, multicolored, you know, tight pants and just jamming up, you know, and, and of course, you know, Calhoun on the drums, just, I mean, that whole, like, that whole thing just blew my mind, you know. Now, when you were with Corey, did he bust out the uh, neon green uh, jumpsuit for you guys? Or? No, man. No, actually, when we did that, um, he was doing, he does this thing with, like, uh, it's a David Bowie tribute thing, but it's with all, like, the actual members of David Bowie's band. So, oh, like... Cool people that have toured with Bowie over the years, they put it together and they just kind of had, it's called, uh, you know, a Bowie celebration. And he had just got, got done doing, he was telling me when I picked him up from the airport, he was telling me about all this crazy travel he just got done doing, you know, uh, they were all over the place. And it was like, literally we had one day where he could fit this in because he had to go back uh, to New York and, and start working on stuff, a uh, different project or he had some stuff going on. But I mean, he was, uh, he was literally like plane, studio, hotel, and he was out the next day. <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. I mean, he got in there and did his thing. You guys did another fantastic cover, that's for sure. Thank you so much, man. So, so what's the plan of attack, man? Are you guys just going to put out singles? You got an album in mind? Um, singles for now. Um, we do have... A ton of, like I said, we had a ton of unfinished material, you know, going back to like a uh, cult of personality was like the first thing that was, you know, not done. Uh, so we released that and then we released Stronger Than Pain, which was, you know, that was already finished at this time. Um, and then, you know, the, the previous release, you know, I think we did board after that and then now so what, but we still have three or four more singles that we want to release and then uh, we're actually going back in the studio in April uh, to work on some new ideas for the for you know a, a subsequent releases. Um, so we got a ton of new stuff coming out. 
um, we're really excited about this stage right now because the one thing with no touring is we've been able to really focus on the creative side of things, um, working on new music and new videos, stuff that's visually interesting, you know, rather than just some words flying across the screen for a lyric video. Um, so we're trying to kind of delving into that and, you know, it's enabling us to work on that more and we can release more material quicker because we're not, you know, out on the road for two months, you know, out on the, you know, home for a couple of weeks and out on the road for a month, you know? So uh, that part of it is, you know, kind of, you know, I guess I'm looking at the, uh, the silver lining, you know? Um, so that's exciting. Like, this is really exciting for us. Cause I mean, we have three more singles ready to go um, over the next couple months. And I just want to be, we just want to be able to release more frequently. Um, I think that's going to be, you know, the biggest takeaway from, you know, the, the streaming stuff. And, you know, the fact that I don't really know that we'll, we'll package a record, so to speak, you know, maybe just release it as singles and, and, and leave it like that. Or I don't know if, you know, I'd like to do something different where, cause I mean, we have a couple you know, live tracks, acoustic tracks, you know, I'd like to maybe, maybe, you know, package it and as an EP and then put those bonus tracks on there. You know what I mean? We but understand. that would, but that would, that might be, you know, that might be something for, that would be, you know, interesting if, you know, for people. Yeah, definitely. Man. I mean, right now it makes sense just to keep on putting out singles because it gives fans something to look forward to every couple of weeks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And I, I would, you know, I'd like to get to the point where we're putting stuff out, you know, every six, eight weeks, um, you know, rather than, okay, here's a whole record that you might listen to one or two songs off of, and then forget about it. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and then, you know, wait a whole nother year after touring and all that stuff, come back, you know, to do another record. I don't want to do that. You know, I'd rather, you know, give everybody a little bit and have them want more, you know what I mean? <laughs> sure i mean definitely i mean you, that you just got to take a completely different approach from the way things used to be i mean you can't put a cd out go on tour and then sell it you know sign one and sell it and fucking at your merch thing anymore and for some reason fans these days don't feel that they need to pay for music man which is fucking crazy you know it, it is crazy and you know again this isn't something that i i, I like to come i I don't necessarily seek the conversation for this because I, I know there's so many different points of view with it, but I just feel like music isn't looked at as a commodity anymore because of, you know, the subscription and streaming services. I mean, you know, I used to really love, you know, going out and, you know, buying tapes and then CDs because you got so much for it. You know, you got the, you know, all the lyrics, some t most of the time, you know, you got some cool artwork, you know, every once in a while, there'd be like, you know, maybe, you know, in the, in the you know, the latter day, maybe like a, a, a what do you call it, like a, a coupon code to go to the website and get merch cheaper, you right. know, and I, I was always like, I kind of approach music as kind of like a historian, like, I want to know who played on this record, because a lot of times, you know, even back then, it's like, you know, sometimes the guy who was in the band didn't necessarily play the guitar on that part or there was additional musicians. And, you know, then years later, those additional musicians end up in huge bands. And it's like, oh, I remember that guy. He, pl he played guitar on this one, you know, track from this artist I like, you know what I mean? And now he's, you know, progressing. You know, I just was always interested in that stuff. I don't know that anybody, I don't know that the majority of music fans are really in into that stuff anymore you know I, I don't know well i mean what fans need to realize though is that this is a business and this is how you make a living though you know what i mean i mean you haven't been able to go to your regular job for over a year you know and let's say you're a restaurant and your restaurant's been closed and all you can do is take out and every month you put out a sandwich I don't think you're going to go and fucking take that sandwich and eat that shit for free and give them, uh, you know, the five dollars for that sandwich. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's that's the thing is like the, you know, the normalization of the streaming services, you know, as cool as it is just to have everything, you know, we're a microwave society, man. We want it then, you know, right then and there. 
So just being able to type in on your phone in Apple Music or, or Spotify, you know, and have pretty much, you know, majority of songs ever written or recorded. Um, I think that that kind of has, you know, desensitized people to the fact that it is an actual product. I mean, because you can't touch it and we don't like, we don't pr really promote, you know, the touching of it, you know, as, as an industry, you know, uh, it's, it's really, it, you know, and it's, I mean, it's, it's a huge revenue stream that's gone. You know what I mean? And I get it. I understand it from the fans point of view, you know, because of these subscription services and everything, they can definitely, they have access to more music, you know, than going out and buying a CD for 12 or 14 bucks, you know? Um, I don't know. I don't know where the compromise is. I mean, I guess, you know, I'm on, I'm definitely on board with like, Spotify actually paying some some money out you know what I mean sure. I'm definitely on, on I mean you're talking fractions of a penny for every time somebody listens to your song you know I, I don't necessarily think that's all that cool <laughs> well you know it's really going to be interesting in a year from now once touring actually starts opening all the way again I mean I know there's states and shit there's people doing it I mean you know Corey uh, Taylor is fucking doing a couple of weeks of Texas and all that bullshit right now. Yeah. But as far as a majority of bands and actual touring, you know, you're even going to see that for at least a year before all the states are open up. But with you all being, with you being in a band and touring being your major income, if you haven't done it in two years, most of these bands, people don't know. These dudes went out and got nine to five jobs. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude. And are they going to feel more stable doing what they've did for the last two years, knowing that they've been able to take care of their family and get a constant paycheck rather than jumping back out and humping it back out on the road, not knowing what touring is even going to be like once it starts up again? Exactly. I, and I, I'm, I was actually just talking on another interview um, the, uh, yesterday about this is, you know, they're through touring for so long, you know, I've really gotten to build some really cool relationships and, you know, people that I really care about from the venues to the, you know, the bar staff to security to, you know, uh, promoters. And I mean, there's a, there's a very large amount of these people that are never going to open their doors again. Okay. They're never, they're never going to be able to return to pre pandemic business and it sucks. And I think that there's going to be a lot of bands that, you know, maybe they keep doing it because I feel like being a musician, that's something that you are, it's not something you do. So I think that they'll definitely, you know, but I think it's, they'll definitely still work on different projects, but I know that there's going to be a lot of, you know, my personal friends that are going to take a step back and they'll do a record when they feel like doing a record. And, you know, if they're gone a long way and they start to get the itch, you know, maybe they'll go out and play some shows, but I know a lot of bands that are not going to, that are not going to come back and, and, and try to do the grind, you know, and I can't say that I blame them, you know, because, you know, people think, you know, unless you start your own business, you know, if you're getting a job somewhere else working for someone else, I mean, you know, being a touring musician is already hard enough if you're doing, you know, several different things. So, you know, what are you going to do? You know, you just worked your ass off for two, for a year, year and a half, two years, maybe even, you know, to get some advancement in whatever you're doing. You know, you're going to throw it away to go, you know, out back out on the road. You know, some people are, you know, some people, there's going to be more cons than pros to that. For sure, man. You know, I mean, it's going to be a new learning experience for everyone all the way around when things start going back to normal. I mean, like you were saying, you know, people who work at these venues and stuff, I mean, I've spent years of my career getting to know everybody. I mean, from the mm -hmm. person that's giving out the ticket, uh, the security, to the promoter, to the front of the house, the back of the house, you know what I mean? Like, I can go from a club or to a huge arena and know, handshake everybody I walk through and be able to have an easy transition. None of these people are going to be there when that shit starts again. You know, I mean, a majority of them aren't, you know, so it's going to be different all the way around for sure. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely going to be an adjustment period. You know, I don't know to what degree and I don't even want to speculate because again, I try to be positive, but I mean, there's, this is a very, this is a very real disturbance that we're dealing with. 
um, in, for our industry. Um, I just hope that everybody that, you know, is suffering from it. I hope that, you know, they get some relief, you know what I mean? And I, I really hope, I mean, the trajectory looks good. You know, here's me going to be positive here is, is, you know, when Live Nation comes out and says that they expect, you know, full scale touring to return, you know, um, I, I, I mean, they, they put on the shows, they have a lot of money and they know, you know, the right people, you know, that hopefully are relaying the right science, you know, um, I hope so, man. I hope that we can all just kind of, you know, I know that it's going to take a while if we, if we ever get to really truly return to the normalcy that we know that we knew pre pandemic, I know it's going to take a while to get there. Um, I just kind of want to get the ball rolling so we can see how, you know, where we need to adjust, you know, business plans and where we need to, you know, uh, kind of see where, what direction we're going in. Now, speaking of getting the ball rolling, and as I mentioned, there are states that are saying, fuck it, man, COVID's over. As a band, do you feel comfortable enough to start jumping into Texas or Mississippi? Man, I'm, dude, me, me personally, uh, I, I don't know. And, I'll, and I'm not judging any bands or anything like that that are doing that because I, I think that it's but I mean, you, you face a lot of backlash on the internet and social media. You know, I see, you know, friends of mine that are doing, you know, little runs in Texas and uh, Missouri and Ohio, I think, and Florida. And there's always somebody right there ready to bash them, you know, saying, oh, I'll be, I'll be waiting until vaccination or, you know, or uh, don't you guys care about, you know, the, you know, people's safety. And I'm like, well, I mean, here's the thing is if the state is allowing shows to happen, I don't see the problem with playing shows. Right. So, I mean, you can have your personal opinion, but I don't think you need to attack any bands over it. It's like, you know, this is how we make our living. You know, we're already not selling records anymore. Like, what, what do you expect us to do? You know, I mean, we, we, we try to, you know, keep up and come out with cool new merch stuff you know, pretty regularly to, to get those sales going. But I mean, it still doesn't like satiate that thing that you get when you're on stage, you know, it doesn't help us build our fan base. It doesn't give me the opportunity to connect with, you know, a, a crowd in a, in a loud, sweaty club, you know what I mean? Sure. So it's, you know, I don't know. Um, for, for us personally right now, um, touring doesn't make sense for us because there's so many, like we live all in different cities now. So right. there's a lot of overhead flying everybody in and getting to a common starting point and then getting on the road and, and going. And, you know, we're not a huge band, dude. We don't have a record label, you know, a major record label, you know, throwing, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars to, to help with our stuff. So, I mean, you know, we're about as DIY as it gets. So everything has to make sense. And when you look at, where we would have to start, you know, we'd have to get the gear somewhere, you know, we'd have to get, you know, rent a vehicle to go. So I don't know that it makes sense to go to, you know, Texas and then have to skip a couple States, you know, drive 800 miles to get to a state where a show is happening. That's, you know, that's going to, you know, financially the bottom line for us, it just doesn't make sense currently. Now, with that being said, you know, we are confirmed on a, a festival in uh, Orlando in August and we'll probably do a little run of shows around there. Um, but, you know, as far as large scale for us, I mean, I, instead of doing these little runs, I'd much rather wait till we can like put together a proper tour or go out with, you know, and support another artist that's doing a really proper tour. And, you know, rumblings, I'm seeing announcements here and there. Mm. You know, I'm hoping that it's happening as early as August, September. Um, you know, I don't know if that's being overly optimistic, but that seems to be, you know, all, all the conversations that I'm having with, with people that know more than me, you know, they seem to be pretty confident that that's when, when we can really start to, to dig in and, and, you know, do some, a little bit bigger scale touring. Yeah, man, Rodney's going to be a bitch. You know, I mean, every state's different. Uh, I'm in New York, so I'm in one of the toughest states that there is. I mean, right now, they're throwing some crumbs at us because there's a controversy going on with our governor. So he's going to try and open up a little bit of shit now and then to take the focus off of them, you know, but, uh, yeah, 
or something. Nothing really. You know, that's, and that's, that's, you know, you know, you touch on something that, you know, I don't generally talk politics, but, you know, just, and I'm not going to here. I'm just saying, you know, it sucks being uh, the one thing that I really, that makes me angry about this situation is I've always been a guy that if you're motivated, you can make money. If you're, you know, if you work hard, you know, and you, you know, persevere through the, you know, ups and downs, if you learn from your mistakes, you know, you, you'll be okay. And like when, you know, the government just came down and, and shut it all down on us, you know, for, you know, I understand the reasons behind it. I'm not one of those, you know, coronavirus doesn't exist guys, you know, obviously it does. And, um, but I just kind of feeling it's, it was a little scary, you know, just to have some outside force just say to you like, yeah, you're not going to do this right now. Right. You know, that's, you know, that's like kind of a big, you know, that's where it's the way I made my living, you know, pretty much my entire adult life. So it's, it's that's, that's a scary thing, man. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, I, I have, you know, family and friends back in New York and, you know, talk, talk to them all the time. And it's quite the shit show you guys got going on back there. I mean, <laughs> like it's yeah. awful, yeah. you know, and, and it seems like it's that whole area, like New York, New Jersey, you know, Pennsylvania, that's, you really, you know, with the exception of California, that's really, and Michigan, Michigan, uh, seems like that's like definitely the hardest, the places that are being hit the, with the most restrictions, you know, and, and like, you know, like I said before, you know, I, I, I've said it a million times, I just have to believe that, you know, the people in the government are getting paid, you know, more to know more than us. And I have to, you know, hope and believe that it's, for everyone's, you know, for everyone's safety and in, in everyone's best interest. But sometimes it gets really difficult to, to try and, and, you know, kind of connect the dots on that. Now, next couple of weeks, man, people are going to be uh, a little bit flush in their pockets. You got that stimulus check coming out there. Do you guys got any crazy merch or anything like that to, to catch that run? Uh, we actually, we just did two new uh, merch designs for uh, the, to kind of coincide with the So What, you know, artwork. Um, we do have uh, a, a couple more in the works right now. Um, our designer, you know, our art guy, he's, you know, fantastic. And, you know, we like to give him his time, you know, because he's a little bit of a perfectionist. But yeah, we'll have some stuff going out. Uh, I, I was actually talking to our singer. Um, we're definitely going to do some kind of, you know, stimulus sale, you know <laughs> what I mean? Um, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I mean, we'll definitely have it out here in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that, uh, I'm hoping that, uh, it kind of lines up with the next release because we have, you know, the, the, merch designs that have coincided you know with the so what release have done really well seems like everybody really likes the two the two designs we did and they're selling really well so hopefully you know maybe that's going to be a, a thing for us you know i know other bands you know this is not a new idea by any means but for us it's kind of new to kind of do a whole you know packaging scheme for each song you know we did it with records before you know with eps but um, I think it just adds another cool little element, you know, to, you know, not, all, not just, you know, revenue potential, but I think it's something cool for, you know, the people that like the band. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You know, it gives them something new to look forward to as well. You know, I mean, think of a fucking ICP and Twisted, man. They got a goddamn shirt for every day of the week, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. I actually uh, had an old uh, crew guy that was working for, uh, for the, for that camp, that psychopathic records camp. And they did it. They had a bunch of their artists and they came close to me. So I went out there and I mean, I was blown away. I mean, the, I mean, they maybe had four or five artists on that bill. And I mean, the whole back wall of the club, I mean, it looked like you were at Rockville or rock on the range, you know, or Sonic temple, you know, and that's how much merch there was. I mean, it was just bang. I mean, they had something for everything. Yeah, man, it's fucking crazy the amount of shit those guys put out, for sure. Now, for people that are watching this, they want to follow up, they want to check out the songs, they want to get some of that merch, where do they go, what do they do? Uh, the best place to probably start is uh, the website, gearsofficial.com. 
Uh, if you go there, that kind of has all the social media links and stuff like that. We have uh, an online store and then we have like a tour surplus store as well, um, which is, you know, we had a bunch of merch made up for the tours that never happened. So we sell that as well. Um, so uh, that's the first place. And then like for, you know, if, if basically if you combine gears and official <laughs> in on all the social medias, you'll find us facebook.com slash gears official uh, youtube.com for all the videos is uh, gears band official uh, Instagram at gears band official. And, you know, you kind of get the idea. Um, and then um, of course, all, you know, the majority of our music is available on uh, Spotify, Apple, iTunes, um, you know, Google, uh, Google play, uh, I was actually, you know, it, uh, we have, a, you know, someone who distributes our, our music for us. And it was kind of weird because I just found out that we have a SoundCloud. I didn't even know we had a SoundCloud. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, pretty much uh, the music is, is everywhere. Cool, man. Well, like, I love your sound. I can't wait to see what comes next from you guys. Thank you for uh, spending some time and talking with me. Thanks, buddy. It was a pleasure. Uh, thanks for having me. Hopefully we'll do it again soon. For sure, man. Hopefully uh, the world opens up. I'll see you guys live. Have a beer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.